you know, the concept, there's a song, something about no man being an island. It's pretty real. And if we are going to do what we are going to do right now, it means making a team work for you. It's all these teams that are at the top. It's never about people at the top. It's about teams at the top. So if we're going to talk about something, then it's a team we're going to build. The first thing I think that we need to look upon is uh, this concept of being an Asian company per se. We did not see ourselves that way. At our board of directors, we have 11 people with seven passports. Not all of them look like me. And, uh, you know, we're pretty international as a crowd. And that adds flavor to who we are. We saw ourselves as a global player. And Hong Kong was just a geographical location to play with. E-market, uh, the e-commerce that was being uh, developed at the time became our modality. That's what we utilize to get out there, to reach the people and touch them. And ultimately, it's exactly about that. It's about being able to touch them. It's about being able to create a level of service that you could keep on building. Now, the um, DVD or the video that you saw earlier talked about 975,000 people or something like that. Today, we just crossed 2 million. 2 million people in our country. And that's built over 200 countries. So the boundaries are coming down, people. Globalization is a reality. It's knocking at our doors. Not to see it and wake up to it after the fact would be the mistake we would make. The reason Singapore thrives is because it is a hub. It is a very real hub. Are you with me? Certain decisions were made very early on that I believe uh, would have been strategically very powerful. They were strategically very powerful. Taking advantage of the, the years, the centuries that made Singapore into what it was. Building upon a lack of boundaries, as building upon bridges as opposed to walls, so to speak. This made Singapore great. Hong Kong, what makes Hong Kong thrive? I can speak a little bit more about Hong Kong because I've been there the last seven years right now. And Hong Kong is a rock. You dig six feet down and you hit solid rock. There's nothing that grows on that rock. You can't, you know, plant paddy. You cannot virtually... The island itself is solid rock. And you know, if you see trees around in Hong Kong, it's because the municipality has come in some, at some point, dug into the rock, put in earth, fertilized it, and made that tree live. Probably it, the tree is numbered and there's a database kept. That's how trees are kept in Hong Kong. Are you with me? It has no minerals to speak of. There is nothing you can get out of that rock. And yet, this six million people at the time of 1997 brought close to 120 billion US dollars with them when they joined China. Now, how did they do that? At that juncture, they virtually doubled China's reserves. By one simple facet, that it is the freest economy on the planet today. It is a thriving metropolis. You get off the ground in Hong Kong, as you walk off the airplane, as you start walking down, you'll see an old lady starting to overtake you. And you're wondering, did I slow down or what? Now, as you start to speed up a little bit with your briefcase and everything lugging out of the, you know, um, out of the gateway, and you try to overtake her back, she speeds up again. Competition is built into the nerves out there. Everyone's in a hurry to get somewhere. Are you with me? Is this all good? No. We need to take time, sit back, breathe. But at the juncture that we are in right now, we can talk about Coach A and Coach B. Coach A is what uh, I refer to as the loving brotherly approach where we go up to you and say, hey, you can do this. You can make it happen. You have the potential in you. It's all there. Wake up, you know, go ahead and get the medal. But here you are, you're at the 100 meters of the Olympic race event. 
Because this is where you are in life, most of you. This is where you either make it or else. Am I right? Would that be a fair assumption to make for a lot of you? The next five or the next ten years are going to make a tremendous difference in your life. Would that be fair? Yes? Okay. So here you are at the Olympic Games. You are at the 100 meters. You are at the finals. You have Coach A who comes and puts his around you and says, Son or daughter, whatever it may be. We are now equally discriminated audience, are we not? Not the equally discriminated. We'll come back to that later. Point being, he says to you, son, you can do this. Just go all out there, get this medal, come back home, the honors are waiting. And if you don't make it, it's fine too. Just do your best. Are you with me? That's Coach A. And Coach B says, look here, son. You see those guys waiting right behind the finish line, those big goons out there? Those thugs? Okay, I have hired them. Now, if you don't make it, you go back in a casket. Now, you, at that time when we had to make it, it's all about Coach B. It's about being able to push that extra hour, turn that extra minute over, seek that extra customer, smile a little longer. Are you with me? And that's made the make difference for us. But we didn't let the fact that we were Asian hold us back. Are you with me? Because we here have an, an heritage that gives us an edge. Two thirds of the population of this planet live in Asia, as you saw by the figures just now. Are you with me? Two thirds of the emerging markets, the new world is the Asian millennium right now. And we know our backyard better than anyone else out there. Are you with me? With due deference to the people who are not Asian. And there is absolutely no reason why we should not turn this around and make it work for us. I mean, I lived in, in the West for 13 years. They have a wedding, 14 people turn up, it's considered midway serious. You've got 20 people, that's a big wedding. Are you with me? Man, you guys don't know what a wedding is. <laughs> you know, if you go out to India or China, it's like a whole village turning up. A thousand people would be considered a mediocre event. So, this is all about networking. It's about the people skills. It's about being able to go out there and talk. It's about being able to build a bond across to the people. We have been doing this for centuries. The Singapore has been right in the crosswinds of this. And this is what it's all about. That element of success requires you to be able to pick up that oomph factor. Are you with me? Now what is this oom factor? No one can explain it to you. No one should try because it's something you're going to have to develop by yourself. It's like a tailor-made suit. It doesn't fit anyone else. If any expert comes up here and says to you, this is the seventh part plan to success. Why seven? Why not 13? You know, that always befuddles me. They have these unique numbers, you know? Seven parts, 16 parts, and so on and so forth. The, the, the issue is, what success that works for us in UI may not necessarily be exactly what you need. But you're going to have to identify with the things that we did and apply it in your own, customize it, turn it around, and make it stick where you did. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Success is not easy. Success could be something that could be branded, put into a little package and sold to you, then everyone who basically goes and attends uh, the so-called success programs, trainings, whatever, would be out there making a million bucks. It's not that simple. 